Outbreak was uh, a movie that I got to work on at Boss Film. Alan Fauché was the model lead on that show. John Warren and I got uh, the opportunity to be leading the mechanical effects crew, I guess. And really, we were just trying to figure out how to achieve what they were looking for, which was the main unit had shot this village that was supposed to be infected with the Mataba virus or whatever. And uh, the military basically wants to get rid of the infection, so they, they drop a fuel air explosion over the village and destroy basically everything. And, and what a fuel air explosion actually is, is they say it's like one of the most destructive munitions you, you can use. And basically it, it actually explodes above the ground. It doesn't land. Uh, it explodes in the air and creates this insane pressure wave that goes directly down and just turns like everything into toothpicks, basically. But for the sake of the movie, they wanted something that was kind of reminiscent of Atomic Cafe footage, which is um, more like um, you have the, this blinding this sequence of events. You have the blinding flash of light followed by a heat wave, which sort of leak, sort of burns all the water vapor out of all the wood and stuff, and then followed by this um, pressure wave that takes the smoke away and destroys, and then ultimately destroys all of the, the stuff. Not a trivial thing to do on a quarter scale miniature that's like 20 foot long. I think it was still the hut was 20 feet long and uh, we had to take the whole thing out in one go. So there was a lot of testing that we did to try and figure out how to do that. Um, and stage by stage, we had to figure out, you know, how are we going to achieve the, this effect? It, um, the visual effects supervisor was Neil Kreppler and he was really wanted this four stage kind of thing. So Alan and his team had built this quarter scale miniature and, and really built it to break away. It was very kind of rickety construction and stuff. And then we had, we had implanted in the miniature all these spray heads, like a sprinkler system, imagine, for AB smoke. So AB smoke is a, two, a chemical compound of A and a B. If you mix them together, you get a plume of smoke. It's actually um, an acid and a base, and it's quite toxic. <laughs> and actually, I don't even think you can use it now today. But we had it, and um, we bought gallons and gallons and gallons of this AB smoke. And we would essentially be these little misters. So we'd spray the, the A side on the model right before the take. And then we'd press, uh, get all the cameras rolling. And then we'd hit the sprinklers. And the sprinklers would sprinkle the B onto the A. And it would just go like this into this. Uh, this you'd get the, all this smoke coming up out. And then you'd have to cut and ventilate the stage because everybody was going to die. <laughs> it was really, 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 really nasty and toxic kind of things you could do back then that you don't really do so much today but it worked pretty well and it was a neat look so problems was that you know the the ab smoke team the, the once we figured this out they'd have to go around and like change the nozzles constantly because the acid was eating away at the nozzles it was a uh, horrendous duty doing that part of the job but meanwhile we were john and i were working on the the next bit which was how are we going to create this pressure wave that's going to take out a, a 20 foot wide structure in one thing safely how are we going to do that something you couldn't really realistically do with a full-size structure. It was one of those situations where miniatures were perfectly suited to do what they wanted it to do. What we did was a series of air cannons. We basically got air cannons from everybody that had an air cannon. There was like a ton of these. And air cannons are usually built with small canisters. They're usually built with like, they're little pops of air that you let out with a solenoid. That's kind of how an air, uh, an air cannon works. In this situation, we need a long flow of air. We needed a the pressure wave to continue to uh, long enough to kind of pick all this stuff up and take it somewhere from distance. So we got all these air cannons and we measured the response time of the various solenoid valves. We filled them initially with air, pressurized air. We had to figure out the amount of pressure that we needed, the amount of time it was going to take for that particular air cannon when it was aimed right to get to where it was going. And then we would, one by one, we would set those up and measure them. And then ultimately we put it on a timer box that we built. And basically with that timer box, we could dial in the precise trigger for each of the um, units. And so that then when we hit go, within milliseconds, they would all fire. And then basically this one single wave would fly, would go across the frame in, you know, and in slow motion, you could tell, and then it would hit, hit the structure and take it out. Very complicated to set it up, but it worked really, really well. 
we were getting better and better at our jobs. But, you know, we, that particular thing, I mean, the, the, there were two guys there at Boss that were um, helping a ton. And one was uh, Bill Klinger and the other was Thane Morris. And those two guys were there kind of giving us hints and guides of like, how are we going to do this? Ultimately, the air in the containers, you know, would create all this water vapor. You can see all this like weird um, clouds going out. So we ended up having to fill them all with um, nitrogen. We also did another another gag on that show, which was the same kind of setup, really it's very similar, but simpler, where we had a Land Rover that gets hit by the same pressure wave and kind of, a, it's a more close up shot and it goes flying. And that was a beautiful uh, vehicle, quarter scale vehicle that they built. And kind of my first real exposure to, to that kind of, you know, building vehicles and things like that and seeing how, how to, you know, make the tires and, and all that stuff. So, but we employed very similar techniques on that one as we did on the, on the big one. That was a neat show because we, we got a chance to design, you know, I'd been craving to do something to have more of an influence than I had had just as like, you know, model maker number 33 on the floor or whatever. And this was like a great opportunity to kind of like really be a part of it and help design it. And I worked with Neil really closely to kind of like come up with the plan of how to do it and stuff. And um, so it was an exciting, it was an exciting project uh, that one was.